I have been led to the opinion and conviction that the surface of the moon is not smooth, uniform and precisely spherical as a great number of philosophers believe it to be, but is uneven, rough and full of cavities and prominences, being not unlike the face of the earth. A landscape of craters, mountains and valleys. A world like our own. A few weeks later, in January 1610, Galileo looked at Jupiter. Close to the planet, he saw four pricks of light that changed their position on the sky night after night along with Jupiter. It was like a slow cosmic ballet of satellites orbiting the planet. These four pricks of light would come to be known as the Galilean moons of Jupiter. What else did Galileo discover? The phases of Venus. Just like the moon, Venus waxes and wanes from crescent to full and back again. Strange appendages on either side of Saturn. Dark spots on the face of the Sun. And, of course, stars. Thousands of them, maybe even millions each too faint to be seen by the naked eye. It was as if mankind had suddenly thrown off its blindfold. There was a whole universe to discover out there. News about the telescope spread across Europe like wildfire. In Prague, at the court of Emperor Rudolf II, Johannes Kepler improved the design of the instrument. In Antwerp, Dutch cartographer Michael van Langren produced the first reliable maps of the moon showing what he believed to be continents and oceans. And Johannes Hevelius, a wealthy brewer in Poland, built huge telescopes at his observatory in Danzig. This observatory was so large that it covered three rooftops. But the best instruments of the time were probably constructed by Christian Huygens in the Netherlands. In 1655, Huygens discovered Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. A few years later, his observations revealed Saturn's ring system, something Galileo had never understood. And last but not least, Huygens saw dark markings and bright polar caps on Mars. Could there be life on this remote alien world? The question occupies astronomers to this day. The earliest telescopes were all refracting telescopes that used lenses to collect and bring together the starlight. Later, the lenses were replaced with mirrors. This reflecting telescope was first built by Niccolo Zucchi and later refined by Isaac Newton. Now, in the late 18th century, the largest mirrors in the world were cast by William Herschel, an organist turned astronomer who worked with his sister Caroline. In their house in Bath in England, the Herschels poured red-hot molten metal into a mold, and when the whole thing had cooled off, they would polish the surface so that it would reflect starlight. During the course of his life, Herschel built more than 400 telescopes. The largest of these was so huge that he needed four servants to operate all the various ropes, wheels and pulleys that were required to track the motions of the stars across the night sky, which is of course caused by the Earth's rotation. Now Herschel was like a surveyor. He scanned the heavens and catalogued hundreds of new nebulae and binary stars. He also discovered that the Milky Way must be a flat disk, and he even measured the motion of the solar system through that disk by observing the relative motions of the stars and the planets. And then, on the 13th of March in 1781, he discovered a new planet, Uranus. It was over 200 years until NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft gave astronomers their first close-up look of this distant world. In the lush and fertile countryside of Central Ireland, William Parsons, the third Earl of Ross, built the largest telescope of the 19th century. With a metal mirror a whopping 1.8 meters across, the giant telescope became known as the Leviathan of Parsons Town. On the occasional clear, moonless nights, the Earl sat at the eyepiece and sailed on a journey through the universe. 
to the Orion Nebula, now known to be a stellar nursery. On to the mysterious Crab Nebula, the remnant of a supernova explosion. And the Whirlpool Nebula? Lord Ross was the first to note its majestic spiral shape. A galaxy like our own, with intricate clouds of dark dust and glowing gas, billions of individual stars, and, who knows, maybe even planets like Earth. The telescope had become our vessel to explore the universe.